but it's very bad. It has no will, that's the thing. It is because of all these things we are today sitting here and discussing. Exactly, the sir. But there is no other solution now. I, uh, uh, Advocate Sonak also, sir, said that only two days there is assembly session. Can't we work? Can't we tell them to have for five days or ten days? Can't we go and yes, talk to the CEO? Because uh, look, let me tell you, uh, the parliament and the uh, uh, normal assemblies, they have sessions, they have the monsoon session, which goes up to a month. Then they have a, a winter session about 15 days. They have a budget session for 15 days, and they have a summer session for another month. All together, put together, I think uh, they work for about uh, 60, 70 days. That's all. Out of which uh, 60 days they'll walk out. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a normal thing. No, but there is no solution for this. So they can't. There is a solution. solution. That is the you. Yeah. You are the solution. So we can ask them always to have two more days extra, right? On this. Look, you means people of Goa. Exactly, I means all, all of us are Correct. You must demand and say, look, let us have a longer session. We want to see how much you are working. Yeah. I have been now in the same. We must have uh, compulsorily under a statute and uh, performance audit of all our elected representatives. Yes. For every year, every year, it's not difficult at all. The Secretariat of the Assembly, Secretariat of the Parliament has all the information. Every year they should put it available in the website so that every man from the uh, voting fraternity will know how often did your candidate, uh, they'll go regularly because sitting fees is fat. But how, how long did he sit in the Assembly? How many questions did he ask? I, earlier I mentioned. 2004-2009, out of 547 MPs, only 140, uh, 174 asked questions. Why are we sending them there? I don't think they, are, they, they have to spend so much of money and send them there. If they are not even uh, contributing anything towards this thing. Now, that is not the only thing. We want to know how often you walked out. What is the total emoluments he has drawn? Because his sitting fees, his salary, are not the only things. He is a member of various standing committees, sitting committees, and various other committees for which he draws the thing. You know, I am in the habit of going to various educational institutions and talking to the uh, students, interacting with them. When the 2G scam was being discussed in the parliament, it was the 17th day of discussion. Only question that was being discussed is whether the PSC should look into it or JPC should look into it. Both are the parliamentary committees. They couldn't arrive at a decision. Then one youngster on the 17th day asked me a question. Sir, what a shame, sir. Our parliament members could not pass even one bill in 17 minutes. I said, young man, you are wrong. Hundreds of bills have been passed. The members' sitting bill, standing bill, sleeping bill, eating bill, all bills have been passed and paid also. But not bills which are legislatively required to be paid, no. That is the people to be sent there, and today we talk about them. And this is the thing, we got to change our attitude. We have to have some element of uh, uh, understanding between ourselves and the locality where we are. Try to change the mind of the people, try and find somebody who's worth this thing, somebody who has time for us, somebody who's concerned about us. Make him stand, work for him. I mean, many questions are asked, oh, they are gundas, they are toughies, they are this and that. Sir, the change in attitude, what you're saying, and you said you referred to us as citizens, we have become amateurs in this corruption. That's what I want. I want you to explain to the crowd, See what I'm using. The damage done by the silence of good people. Can you explain something on this? The damage when good people keep silent. Yes. I'll give the best example, and I, I think I did not go for that further. About the people who are keeping silent. There was a very nice article uh, about uh, six months back in Times of India by an, uh, a journalist called Gurcharan Das. How honest is the Indian Chief Minister, a Prime Minister? He says, I know he's financially honest. But then I got my doubts. So he goes into an anecdote in Mahabharata. When Draupadi's Vastrahana was going on, 
a group of people were pulling the sari. Another group was encouraging them. And a third group which put their head down and said, what's happening? And did nothing to protest. Then Vidur stands up. He says, is this our dharma? I have understood my dharma to mean that in a situation like this, half the punishment that is prescribed should go to those people who are actively committing the crime. 25% should go to those who are encouraged. 25% should go to those who kept quiet and did nothing. And half the minister is 25%. Ladies and gentlemen, that applies to you all. Those of you who keep quiet and do nothing about it and all, then you are guilty to the extent of at least 25% of the what is happening. I'm a social activist and a Belperera and I've been uh, on this movement for years. Now one of the things I think uh, we, uh, I have been very encouraged by the outstanding achievement of the of your Lok Yukta in Karnataka and the illegal mining, which has also an impact on Goa. As uh, yesterday's papers, uh, the Congress president has said that none of the ministers are involved. And today's paper said the chief minister is involved in the illegal mining. Now, uh, I think that we, uh, as you have said, it is our fault. We are not being proactive about introducing this Lokpal bill. I am not going to accept that the assembly is going to be for two days, as the, uh, my colleague has said. Why shouldn't we, as a uh, or be proactive and uh, agitate in the next 10 days, or uh, bring in a uh, non-violent uh, action group, as uh, like Anna Hazari's group, and enforce the enforce the assembly to pass the Lokyukta bill, to implement the Lokyukta bill, which is already passed in 2003. Now, can, uh, can uh, two active, two people, one from the north of Goa and one from the south, I think they have. Why do you have to divide it? Why don't you say from the Goa? From Goa, no, because the, because of the distances. There's a very active person in uh, South Goa. You know that, uh, the newspapers and South, North, East, West. Yeah, the whole of Goa. Uh, companies and the, all these things. Let's forget it. Yeah, Goans are Goans. No, because there are no. I not guess that. I feel the whole of Goa, but there has to be coordinated action of groups. And as far as the coordinated action of groups, it cannot be done on the whole of Goa. Like the distances are too vast to uh, to cover people. Now, unless we uh, should start out a plan today, because I know after the first very active meeting we had, uh, uh, India against corruption in January 30th. After that, the convener did not get in touch with us for six months, and I was very disappointed. There was lots of things that going on, and we were. Uh, asking him and there were members of the Donapala group who were very disappointed and I said, well, I'm not the convener. You asked the convener and in spite of everything, then there was again 15 days, I'm sorry to say, yeah, there was no action. Now, I want a pro uh, proactive convener or a coordinator so that, that there can be action before the 5th of October so that they will wake up and as you said, it is up to us to enforce the assembly to pass these things. Because if they can pass bills for their benefits, we need this. Uh, we need this bill to be passed for our benefit. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, uh, is a co-member of the General Lokpal team sitting here. He's from Goa. I think you should uh, answer this question. Why? Why can't you uh, get the people together and uh, um, uh, start a movement? Because U.S. is uh, just give the mic for one minute here, please. Uh, <coughs> first of all, thank you very much. Uh, the thing is that one difference we should uh, understand here is that India Against Corruption is not an organization. India Against Corruption is the movement. It's people's movement. So everyone, wherever they are, and whatever they are feeling to take up these issues, they are free to take it. So, should not wait that somebody will come and lead you. 
I think we are, that's why, you know, if you see that one slogan is given during the entire Janlok Parliament that you are Anna, I am Anna, we all Anna. So, as here also people are saying, we are all Asantos Egre. So, I think to, instead of complaining, we should take up this moment, or you should lead us. We are there to uh, support you each and every uh, moment with you. That's one thing. Second thing, but still, I believe that if we have not able to communicate with people properly, then it's uh, somehow it's our failure. And we will see that in the next future. Whatever the program will be conducted, we will try to uh, see that it should be reached to everyone. And I think in the near future, we have to come together uh, and we have to, as you rightly mentioned it, that we have to fight more uh, with more energy and with a more uh, systematic way. And we will do it there. Thank you. Today and we go ahead with it before the 5th of October. I think you should call a meeting because uh, uh, now that the state of the assembly is very, very close, uh, so some people uh, should uh, listen because uh, uh, the people in Anna. No, you can say the date, we will come. Yeah. Sure, okay, we'll, uh, we'll say Monday because you know the faster the better. Monday is tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Not there. Thanks. I will please. Azad, my son, but then we have to uh, get a clearance. Get a clearance. Okay, I'll have it published in the paper at my expense. I'm not concerned about that. But I would like people to come. Then Monday, I will Tuesday. Monday, you require permission. Today, office is closed. Monday, I'll ask for permission, and Tuesday, we have to Evening after uh, office hour, that is, so that more people can attend. Five thirty-six. Somebody say four. Somebody says, okay, we we'll make it five, so that people will. You fix the time. Yeah. We can't go on asking for yeah. opinions in these matters. Okay. So those who are really interested in fighting will be there. I'll publish it in the newspaper so that we get it up and get to the. <laughs> and bring somebody so my, my question to you. Thank you very much for all your efforts. Very much appreciated by us. But I have a fear that we are all trying to work out this thing. But I do not know who is my law minister. Because our law footballer is with our chief minister. And our chief minister is a builder. And he's also minor. a minor, minor. And a lawyer, a mine owner. So are we really going to let us be in the past? Madam, no. oh, just an interruption. And he's also a minor, you said. I got a little doubt. No? <laughs> So my question to you is, why do we encourage civil society to come with legislation when we already elect people to parliament and to the assemblies? Once the legislation is brought in the assembly or in parliament, if there is any 
difficulty or opinions to be taken. The bill gets referred to the select committee and there we have an option to go ahead and deliberate the things at the select committee. Now, if we have civil society, which civil society can represent the entire population or the entire uh, the respective state? Take a case in Maharashtra, for example, because there were groups of people who felt that outsiders should be thrown. They started beating this certain people from North, Goa, uh, North India and sending them out. Are we encouraging this sort of a jungle raj by encouraging civil society to come with legislations? I'm a little surprised by the manner in which you asked this question. Yeah. You started by saying, why should there be a civil society when we have elected representatives? Because our elected representatives are failing. Yes. I said, why should the civil society come up with legislation? That is later. Before that, you said, when we have elected representatives, no. there is no need. That, I meant that, why should civil society come up with legislation when we have elected representatives both in the assembly and in the. Because they are not doing their job. Commission recommended the creation of Lokpal. Correct. You had your elected member. Correct. Was there a Lokpal? No. Then the, what, what's the answer? <laughs> who, who should answer? People who, who, they can't keep quiet. So now we we allow the system. We allow the people now because yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. Today you are know, asking that question. Don't force somebody to no, use that legislation of yours. Accepted by the, by oh, you want the government <laughs> 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 Sir, my name is Sadhguru Patil. I am a journalist. Sir, I have read your report partly about the Karnataka state, and you have made some passing remarks about the illegal mining in Goa. I mean, you have said that uh, illegal mine from Karnataka, over from Karnataka, has exported to Pakistan through Marbuga port. So, can you please throw some light? Because Chief Minister and the PCC President has said that the situation is not bad in Goa, as just like Karnataka. So, we just wanted to know from you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I have read in the paper, I don't know which one you represent. You are a journalist. Yeah, yeah. Right? Lokman. Yeah. Out of uh, 92 or 93 mines which are operating, only 9 mines has a current uh, yes. lease. Is that legal? Yes. So, how many of them are, are uh, running illegally? 90. Just see. Huh? Uh, therefore, uh, a small state like Goa, of course, in Karnataka also, in my uh, district of Balari, Chittasasa and Tungur, which may be put together as big as Goa. Huh? The amount of illegal wealth that is gone. You must understand one thing. Mineral is not a regenerable resource. resource. Exactly. Once gone, it's gone forever. And you want to take it during your lifetime, you don't want to leave it for the future generation. They won't even know. The metallurgist will won't even see it. They may have to have a computer generated iron ore. <laughs> no, what I'm trying let me just complete with this thing, you know. Now, what we have wrote, you said, uh, you read a little bit of it, and you said, uh, some mineral ore has come, it's not some, no? it's huge amount of it. Huge amount of which it could not have been mined in Goa. Goa doesn't have the same ferrous content, content as uh, what was exported from here. Your export document shows that they have been exporting, I know, between 62 to 64 FE, which is not available in Goa. That is the, we have corresponding documents where by train the iron ore is brought to um, this thing, Goa, for consumption in Goa, but not consumed in Goa, but exported either directly or mixing it with the local iron ore. 
I mean, this is sufficient material for anybody to do. And I believe Justice uh, Shah was here uh, with the Dr. Yubi Singh, and they made statements about uh, this thing. Now, who says I'm not doing it? Who says I'm doing it is an immaterial thing. Ultimately, the investigating agency will say, find out who it is. Okay, I think it's 12:30. Uh, uh, we started with. All I wanted to request is whatever, whichever way we go to seek justice in whatever forum, the social audit for Goa, what is its stature and what is in truth to it, the environment is totally degraded. We do not know what is a forest, we do not know what is a hill. And the town and country planning minister, which happens to be the chief minister also, doesn't even have the etiquette to reply or even give an appointment when you seek.